Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll MMA podcast. I'm your host, Sky. Co host, Jace. <laughs> Jace. Uh, we are back. Um, how was your weekend? Anything going on? Did you. Well, hold on real fast. Let's. Uh... <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> Listen, before you, know. you get started, Damien couldn't be here today, okay? He wanted to so bad, but he's not going to be able to be here today, so I'm going to have to eat all the shit. Go ahead. I already know. <laughs> Go ahead. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, let me do my... Uh, I feel like Stephen A. Smith right now. Kind of oh. just like, you know, here I am about to go off, you know, because here's, here, here, here's the bottom line. Here's the bottom line, all right? Um, what can I say? I am the king of kings, the go to goats, the great one, the chosen one, the Jace. I told y'all, actually, we'll stop there. Call me a prophet because I predicted it was going to happen. Stephen Thompson beat the brakes off that boy. Now we can proceed. Are you done? For now. I mean, when Damien comes back, he's got to get this work, too, because, you know, y'all listen, always in life, you have to remember the three D's in life. That's oh my what God. it is. Stop. Don't doubt daddy. You know Stop why? It. Because daddy knows best. This is this is what I deal with on an everyday basis. I knew it was coming. I just knew it. This whole time That's before we said. press record, <laughs> the whole time before we press record. He didn't say anything about it. And as soon as we started, oh God, yeah. And it's probably gonna go on until he gets something wrong. Then when he gets it wrong, you know, all of a sudden we won't be getting all this bravado. I don't know. I, I don't know what it's like to, 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 to get anything wrong. I feel like Habib at this point, just undefeated. <laughs> 29 and 0. A. Hey. Smash Brothers. <laughs> e. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what they called me, you know, back in the club days, but that's over. <laughs> How did you feel about Orlando's card in general? Yeah, uh, Orlando cards was fucking crazy. Everyone scrapping, finish it. You know, conversely, we take that with the bullshit we watched last week and eh. almost took a nap last week. <laughs> Let's just say I was there live and I shit you not, I dozed off. I dozed off and all of a sudden I was sitting there and I was just looking and I was like, whoa, okay. I was like, holy crap. I've never dozed off at an actual event. I was like, let me sit all the way up. Like, let me get cold in here because at this point, like I'm way too freaking comfortable. Um, yeah, that the first couple of cards were just, they were the first couple of fights, even though they were finishes, they weren't that entertaining. And they were late finishes. And those late finishes just kind of made it seem like, oh, it, it was hard. And I actually dozed off in the, uh, which fight was it? It was the second fight. So Eric Silva versus TJ Brown. Um, Damn. <laughs> and, and, and and just to be clear, you didn't doze off from uh, the boozing, right? You dozed off. I had no booze. Board. I had no booze. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, You're middle of the day. Me. Yeah, middle oh, of the man. day. Um, yeah, I mean, the card was good. I, you know, you had the... It, well, it was all right. Like, I don't know what... I expected just a little bit more fun. You know, Chris Curtis and Joaquin Buckley woke me up. Like, when that came nice. on, I was like... Now, the Billy Q one wasn't bad either, but Chris Curtis, I was like, okay. Even, like, the first round, like, you know, Buckley came out with that energy. Like, he was coming there to fight, and Chris was being patient, picked him apart. Um and got him out of there. Like the boy woke up, he hit his head, he woke back up. <laughs> I was screaming, but here's the thing, right? As well, we have to also realize like, we have been so fucking spoiled this year with just tremendous card after fucking tremendous car, sleep, sleep, sleep. Everyone fucking getting passport stamps because they got knocked out and woke up in different countries, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and this wasn't bad. There was just something that was missing. like. I don't know what it was, but it felt flat. It felt flat. You know, Edmund Shabazian got it done. Um, and that was good. But Jarzinho Rosenstrike, by the time he got there, I was full awake. That boy, if you blink, it was over. He did Listen, not come there to play. Say, Mama, there goes that man. Oh, look, Mama, that's a bad man. 
where has that guy been? You know, because he burst on the screen. He was undefeated. He was fucking Scott starching people left and right. And then he ran into a fucking dumpster. The predator. Pumped. Francis Ngannou, who literally just walked through him. Wait, Francis just no form, just swinging. Oh, oh, oh. Straight gorilla status, you know, coming oh, out there, man. Planet of the Apes. Yeah, and I think since then, like, how many fight he did he lose the Clark Curtis Blades after that? Yeah, I think he was on a two or three fight skid, if uh, memory serves me correct. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he lost to Volkov and he lost to Curtis Blades. Yeah. Oh, he got TKO'd by Volkov. That's embarrassing. <laughs> I mean, it could be worse to get TKO by Curtis fucking go to sleep blades. That that's that's true. One thing that I do want to acknowledge here is that like the UFC's got to start making people wear their fucking cups when they take these uh, <laughs> when they take these uh, little side by side pictures because you don't like the moose knuckle. It's giving gray sweatpants. You know, it's giving dick print twenty four seven, and for a sport that's already like homoerotic like <laughs> i'm just not sure that's what you're going for because literally a couple when izzy fought danny looks up at the stream she goes why is his dick on the screen <laughs> facts your boy Boys izzy just be slaying dick left and right living his best life and then let's give yes. it up for your boy raul rosas jr the 18 year old the 18 year old getting a pop like it was okay it wasn't full in there yet but the amount okay. of pop and energy that he got when he walked in was bigger than Patty the Baddies, which I was really, really shocked by. Like, and I will get to the Patty and all that stuff. But like, he did what he said he was going to do. Viva Mexico, right? That's the thing. If you can captivate the Mexican fans, the Mexican fans are just like the British fans, just like the Canadian fans. You know, they will get behind you. But as we know, the Mexicans as a culture is just a fighting culture. You think about the great boxers from Julio Cesar Chavez. Uh, <clears throat> definitely not his son, obviously. Now we got Canelo Alvarez, you know what I mean? You mm -hmm. think of even like a Roberto Duran, mm -hmm. you know, just all these Mexican blood fighters. They're just fighting culture is so strong there. It's unreal. I love it. Yeah. And they were there. Like, they were so low key. Like, I guess because like leading up to that, there wasn't much that was happening. But when they announced him, you felt like I got chills. I recorded oh, wow. the whole thing. Yeah, like I got chills. I was like, holy shit. Like it and there were Mexican flags everywhere. And like I said, it wasn't packed by then. Like it was still there were still a lot of seats that had not been full, filled. And I was like, holy crap. Like this this is absolutely insane. So, you know, he got it done easy. Got well, the 50 the thing. G's. Um unlike Patty the Batty, at that time, England was still in the World Cup. Mexico had been out for a fucking minute. <laughs> Just to let um, everyone know, uh, as much as I love MMA, like my first love is football. I actually, football. Uh, I know Manchester United represent. I take off the shirt and flex the tat for you, but you know, I don't want the fanboys and girls going crazy. I mean, that's, that's absolutely insane that you got a tattoo of that. What would I look like getting a tattoo of Max? Can you imagine? A stalker. A predator. <laughs> His wife might, you know, ban you. No, stop it. That's, that's what yeah. I think about. Yeah. Uh, is it because it's a person rather than a team? I think so. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I'd say so. It's like weird when people get like celebrities like tattooed on their fucking face. I don't understand yeah, that. Like, like the amount of people that have Joe Rogan on them is insane. I'm not getting another grown ass man on me. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> well, that's what she said. It, it's <laughs> just as likely to happen for a grown ass man to be on me. <laughs> um, one thing I do have to say is up until this point, like I had crossed off, like I, had, I was like, just loosely made my predictions. I was seven to no. I had not got any fight wrong. I had predicted everything correct. I sent it to Jace. And the first thing that he said is Bryce Mitchell is going to get starched. And I was like, there's no way. I was like, no, shut up. Hold on. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? I think, I think, I think I'm going to need some theme music. I think I'm going to need some some theme music. I'm thinking maybe like a queen, perhaps like we are the champions. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh. Yes. 
you definitely 100% did send me a thing saying, yo, I'm on fire. And I said, yo, <laughs> ah, Bryce Mitchell went it. Oh, man. Listen, he just got that Scott Starch remix. It's not going to happen. Now, let's talk about this fight because it was fucking incredible. What yeah. were your thoughts on this guy? Ilya Zaporia put it on him. Bad. In every aspect, on the feet, on the ground, he put it from start to finish. I, I don't know who Bryce was in there. So so it, it, did you hear what uh, he said about it? I heard he said he had the flu. That ain't got nothing to do with me. <laughs> Listen, all MMA fighters abroad, okay? If you take an L, if you take an L, just take the L. Hey, he was the better man. He was a better man. All right. You can't come out being like, oh, man, like, you know, I got the flu or being like, shout out to your boy, Deontay Wilder. Like, oh, I didn't try this costume before it wore me down. <laughs> Listen, first of all, we're going to fucking laugh at you. Second of all, OK, hey, we don't care. You took the L. And then all this shit just sounds like back noise excuses. We're over it. You're done. Yeah. Just say you lost. Yeah. Too easy. Because had you won, would you have told us that you had the flu? Hell to the motherfucking no. No. It's like we all automatically as MMA fans have to know every fighter is going in there with something. Some people are fighting Correct. in there with Chris, uh, Kevin Lee fought in there with full blown staph infection. Who? <laughs> That's how he fits into this. <laughs> Kevin Lee? Who? who, who that? Never heard of him. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So there's always something that's going on. Like, but you know, hey, if you, if you don't want to fight, I love Amanda. But, you know, regardless of what was going on with her knee or what wasn't going on with her knee, when she lost to Juliana, she lost. Like, don't get in there. Like, if you know that you can't be your best self, don't get in there. And please don't get in there thinking that you're TJ Dillish, like TJ Dillashaw, thinking that, you know, you're just going to go inside there and walk all over somebody, even if you're compromised. It's like Mr. John Majuse himself. Well, I don't know if it had him being compromised or him just off the John Majuse. Who knows at this point now? But Sky, so I got to ask you a question, right? Mm -hmm. I think we both agree. Ilya is a motherfucking problem. All I see in my head is that image of him knocking out Jay Hubert in London and the man just slumped over like the power. Who does he fight next? Who wants that smoke? Who signs um, up for that? Arnold Allen in London. Run it. March 18th. Run it. Because. Uh, Ily will run over Arnold Allen. That's for goddamn sure. I, I, I want to see it because they're, this hasn't been updated yet, but Ilya just fought Bryce, who was nine. So now he's going to be in the top 10. Ahead of him is Giga. He could fight Giga. Calvin Cater. Um. Korean Zombie, Josh Emmett, and Josh Emmett's already fighting. Arnold Allen doesn't have a fight, so nine times out of ten, uh, uh, Zombie's out. They wanted him versus Giga um, for the Seoul Korea card, um, but yeah, I think it's going to be Arnold. So I have two words <laughs> for you thinking about putting Arnold Allen against Ilya. Do you want to know mm -hmm. what those two words are? Mm-hmm. In the words of the never, ever has been or will be great Brandon Schwab, <laughs> career, career suicide. suicide. Career suicide. Scott, you want to give a background on that term career suicide? Because I don't think a lot of people actually fucking know where it comes from. After Max Holloway killed Brian Ortega. Um, Murdered. Ridiculously, right? Um, Brandon Schwab is really good friends with Brian Ortega. He's on his podcast. He's talking about it. And he goes, you know, what's next for Brian Ortega? And he's all like, you know, I'm hearing talks about potentially Jose Aldo. <laughs> and your boy Brandon goes, career suicide. Whatever you do, do not fight Jose Aldo. <laughs> career suicide, my boy. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to put that clip up here. So funny. Please. And and I'm and I'm letting you know now, Arnold Allen against Alia, career motherfucking suicide. You think so? You don't home? think he got enough power? Did you not think that Bryce M M M Mitchell was going to beat him? I thought because of his grappling, I thought that his grappling was going to be superior. So you thought, but you also thought wrong. Got it. Cool. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, it was a great performance by him, and the whole time, like you know, you had people saying, "Oh, he's not focused on Bryce, and he's only focused on Patty," and uh, he shut all those people up. 
He was like, listen, we'll I know Patty. what I'm here for. <laughs> we'll he kills Patty. Patty. Patty he kills Patty. Career wait, wait, suicide. Career <laughs> <laughs> suicide. Career suicide. Got, and the thing about Illy that I found like so compelling was like, one, it was like his gas tank. But two, like your boy threw the kitchen sink on every punch. Yes. Every punch he threw the fucking kitchen sink. He was cracking Which, you him. know, yes. Which will be interesting if he faced like a more complex striker who's going to get out of the way of that kitchen street and crack back at him. You know what I mean? Like he's got to tighten it up a little bit. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to say it right now. He is my dark horse for the division. Ah, the 145 dark horse has been nominated. Okay, I could see that because Giga, Giga died. <laughs> Who? A, de- a dead, you know, a dead Calvin Cater came back and killed Giga Chikaze. <laughs> Which is weird because he got killed by, by Max Holloway. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like a zombie killed and made another zombie. Like it, it's catching on. Um, speaking of Giga, like that fight was this year. Do you realize? And that fight was so good. Oh, just thinking about trying to think about fight of the night. Like there's a lot of fights we're forgetting, but uh, let's get into it. Darren Till. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> go to- in the words of Dion Cole, <laughs> listen, this guy, like, I am oh. fucking bamboozled, right? Oh. His homeboy, his baby dally is fucking cum shot, right? Yeah. And all he's supposed to do is working on his takedown defense, working on his takedown defense, working on his takedown defense. He had zero. Let me repeat for the record. Zero <laughs> takedown defense. A toddler trying to get away Right from their parents has more takedown defense than what he had. That was ridiculous. And Duplessis is not a wrestler. No. The- Do you think that that uh, really was the fight of the night? Yeah, I would say yes, because hmm. in well, it should have been over in the first. Like taking sixty-five shots to the head, just <laughs> up against it. Like, like really? In what universe? Like, do you just let somebody get punched that many times in the head? And then the second round, you know, they had a scrap. Somebody who owes you money. <laughs> who, was, who was the referee? How much you want to bet? Wait, <laughs> please tell me it wasn't Herb Dean's fault. <laughs> I think it was Herb. No, 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 it wasn't Herb. It was uh, okay. M- Mark Smith. Also known as the other black that. guy. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why they let uh, Duplessis uh, do Darren Tier like that in the first round. But, um, yeah, man, I, I just don't know. Like, how many fights has Darren lost in a row? Is this his fourth loss in a row? Fourth in a row. I feel like we're just, like, living off of early stages of Darren Till and, like, not Correct. accepting who he is now. So, same conversation should be having about Taylor there or how you feel about, like, Tony Ferg. Oh, he won this one. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah, yes. Well, the only reason why I say no is because Darren Till hasn't, he hasn't, um, he's only, what, 29, I think? 29, but yeah, getting 20... his ass kicked, he's probably about 38. Uh, I don't I don't know. I don't, it might do him good, maybe, maybe even to get out of the UFC and get, like, some fights outside of the UFC against like just different competition. I, I don't, I don't know. Try PFL. By different competition. <laughs> but by different competition, you mean like tomato cans. I mean, try PFL. You have the, pot- you might do well there. Who knows? You might have the potential to be able to like to win the million dollars. Like I'm not recommending anybody go to Bellator at this point because Bellator does not know how to promote a fight. They don't know how to promote their fighters. And, Everybody, it's just like a graveyard over there. Like, stay away from Bellator. Like, go to PFL, look at one, do something else. The worst thing about the Bellator, their name, Bellator. <laughs> Who the fuck thought of that? What like, is wait it? Wait a second. Uh, what is a Bellator? Yeah. What's, let's ask the good old <laughs> Google. Let's ask, let's Google on the Googler. Sky, make sure not to type in Pornhub, please. You're my <laughs> sister, I don't want to know what you watch. <laughs> Uh, warrior, soldier, fighter. That's what Bellator means. Okay. Okay. Thanks for letting mm. us know that. They sh- sh- should have said that because it's terrible marketing. <laughs> you know, it just, it doesn't sound good. It doesn't roll off the tongue. You know, no. like PFL. Okay, cool. An acronym, Professional Fight League. Got it. Mm-hmm. UFC Ultimate Fighting Championship. Got it. You know, one fighting. Like, cool. It's very simplistic. Even like a cage warriors. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, um, 
it makes sense. The Bellator is just, I, did, I didn't know. I don't want to have to Google shit when it comes to fighting. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, they're just doing a bad job. So I, I don't know what's next for Darren. I mean, what would you do with Darren? Um, you know, I hear, um, so for everyone who know, I just moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota, don't you know? Minnesota. Um, and I was just at Mall of America the other day, and I saw that they needed help uh, with security. Maybe Darren Tilt could fill in. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, I hey, I mean, I, I got some rub. I got some grease. I can, I can, I'm sure I might be able to get him in. Maybe. Oh, poor Darren. That's all I get kicked out of the UFC. <laughs> and then go to BFL. Oh, <laughs> she went there. Oh. You know, just in case somebody wants to know how to get out of their contract nowadays. Um, yeah, then your boy Ponzanibio. I still haven't went back to watch the um, the second round when his coach is like amping him up for the third round because obviously we were there live, Hype. so I didn't see it. Um, Hype. Hey, way to listen to your coach. Um, so, you know, he, this is also like a real conversation to be had is like, do you want your corner to be honest with you? Absolutely. Because his corner said, you are down zero to two. Fucking go out in a blaze of glory. Go get this money. Go get this W. My yes. man's did. My man's did. Hey, that's what you got to do. That's what you have to do. Sitting there telling your fighter, I don't know. Listen, too many people are getting comfortable. We're about to get to it in the next one. Too many people are getting <laughs> comfortable about what the hell's going on. Like, foot on the gas. And you know what I can't stand? Like, I, I, I can't stand when somebody is, like, pacifying their fighters in general. You know, you're doing this well. No, fuck what I'm doing well because I'm losing. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, maybe he didn't know he was losing, you know? <sighs> you know, good good for Ponza Nibio. He needed that win, especially because he was coming off an injury. Um, I know he was coming off like a real bad injury. And yeah, prior to that, for like, like a year two, two years. Yeah. I think he got like a really bad lost. staph infection and like some crazy stuff happened with him. Yeah. And then he lost. Um, yeah, that split decision. The the fight against him versus Neil was a split too that I thought he won. Um, it was close. Him and Neil, it was a, that was a really really close fight. That was last year, and then yeah, the one with uh Pieta. I don't I don't recall that fight, but like yeah, he was coming off some um some tough losses. Um, so for him to get it done, and then of course Alex Morono stepping in last minute. I mean, it was a good fight. They were banging. They were going at it. Alex Facts. has such an interesting style, the way that his hands are like super open and like like his stance is uh, inviting different. you. Different, yes, to get knocked the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Almost like his uh, the 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 other the other Alex in one eighty five just asks Izzy about that. Poor Izzy. <laughs> Poor Izzy, my ass. He's all right. Let's get into it. The Golden Boy. Well, by Golden Boy, if you mean Golden Shower, shout out to R. Kelly. Sure. <laughs> Listen. So I, when I seen London's card, both of them, I was like, man, I want to go to a patty fight. Like I told Jace, I was like, I want to go to a patty fight. I want to see what, and feel what a patty walk. Like legitimately, that's why I want to go to this card because I wanted to be a part of the pa the patty crowd. <clears throat> I learned some things. One, Americans Sweet. have no idea when to start the chant. Like, you know, the London crowd has been with him for years, so they're used to it. We're not used to it. And we didn't know when to start. And it was flat, you guys. Like, it, I don't know what it sounded like on TV. All I know is that my experience of like, there was a moment where I like sat there and like looked at my coworker that went with me. And we were both kind of like, oh, this is awkward. Like, what is going on? Like, it's not given what it's supposed to. And he's still all, uh, you That's know, doing that. <laughs> It, when you the, say flat, do you mean like flaccid flat? Just to clarify. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, gotcha. No curve tip, no anything. It was. It was <laughs> um, you know, so the walkout, it was just like, meh. I, like Nick Diaz. I mean, Nate Diaz has a way better walkout. Brandon Moreno, like I've said in a previous video, Raul Rosas Jr. had a better walkout with less people there. Um, just the energy was much different. And then to go on to the fight, literally. Let's talk about it. <sighs> literally, the people that I was sitting next to, they're literally screaming, Patty, you're down 2 0. -oh. Get like everybody, every, all of us is sitting there, we're all like, what the hell is going on? Like, he does know that he's down. 
So let me Every- ask you this. Did you feel like he was down 2-0 going into the third? I thought it was 30-27, Jarrett. Mm. Your boy was getting mm. cracked with the chin high. That was pissing me off. <laughs> Your boy was in prime teabagging position. Like, the only round I could think, okay, maybe give to Patty could have been the second. You know, uh, the second's arguable. So 29-28. But either way, I felt like Jarrett won the fight. Um, So for me, like, you know, I feel like now in MMA, we throw out this term robbery a lot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We want to, to slap it on everything. I don't think this was a robbery. You know, when I think of a robbery, I think of Dominic Reyes against John Jones. Robbery. I think of Gustav against John Jones, the first one. Damn, you know, a lot of people get robbed with John Jones because I even thought that John Jones lost the fight against Thiago Santos, right? Um, so I wouldn't call it robbery uh, in any capacity, but I will say, yes, I did think Jared won the fight. Um, I thought that Patty definitely won the second round by the slimmest of margins. Um, I guess you can kind of maybe in like a different universe say, you know, Patty won the first round. But I think the thing that really got me in my motherfucking feelings was round three. And for the simple fact that two of the judges gave Patty round three is just like, what in the fuck did you just watch in life? There's what were you no watching? how, no way in any capacity that he could have won the third fucking round. No. Didn't happen. And then, so, um, I know that you watched the post fight and Dana White, you know, kind of talking about, oh, like he cruised into the third round. Like, what is your reaction to Dana White's comments? I think uh, Dana White was high off the Patty Pimlet juice as well, because um, first of all, when he when they announced that Patty won, I don't know if it came through on the broadcast, but everybody was booing the whole. And when he's talking about what do you think fight of the night, everybody's booing. Could you hear that? Yes, one hundred percent. Okay, the yeah. were in the house. Nobody and like you came out the favorite. Literally, there were people in there with those stupid ass wigs on. You know, <laughs> grown bad. men with yeah, grown men with wigs on, but won't watch WWE. I don't know, but <laughs> you know, and and then like you had the crowd completely turn on him. So his experiment here in the U.S. Is, did not go well. And second, with Dana making that statement. I, I don't know what fight uh, Dana was watching. Over there, so mad at Jerry. Let me ask you this. <laughs> let me ask you this. Do you have a so if you if you're a coach and you feel like your fighter had clearly won the first two rounds, do mm-hmm. you have an issue with telling your fighter, "Hey, just don't get knocked out or finish this third round"? Do you have a problem with fighters coasting in the final round on a fight that they should be clearly ahead of? Uh, let's uh, take this time to speak to the late, great Kamaru Usman. <laughs> Is I mean, he back from his trip yet? Uh, no, nah, haven't seen him. Because <laughs> I know he went on a trip. I don't know if he's back yet. No, haven't seen him. Still there somewhere. <laughs> Still in motherfucking Narnia. Got it. Yeah. So when you think about that and in that post presser, uh, after Dana went on that spiel, he goes, well, then I think about Kamaru. He's like, Maybe everything I say doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit exactly. Because if you're Kamaru Usman and you're up four to one pretty much because he was going on to win the fifth round as well, and then you get caught, it's like, oh, shit. Same thing with Izzy. You know what I mean? Like, no, you're supposed to win. Like, at the end of the day, we may not like it. It may not look great, but win. Win, win, win. They can't stop you when you win. You know what I mean? Yeah, coast. Don't coast, but be safe. Be fucking safe, dude. If it's close rounds, okay. But at the same time, like, why get caught with something? A hundred percent. Like, I don't want to get caught with a knee. I don't want to get caught with an elbow. I don't want to get caught with herpes. I don't get caught with none of it. <laughs> Facts. Facts. Yeah, um, yeah so, so sucks for Jared. Mm-hmm. Oh, so overall, you would tell your fighter to coast. And not so many words, yeah. Fair. Get home safe. That's what I would say. Get home safe. <laughs> E.T., go home. Hey, 
they don't have to like it, but guess what? What pays the bills? Getting my full paycheck, not getting half. It was bullshit. Yeah, but you still can win and still get screwed. Oh, well, that's what happened. I mean, shout out to Tony Ferguson, 13 fights in a row. Yeah, poor guy. What are you going to do? Go out there and get beat up in front of nobody by Justin Gaethje. Stop. And then, <laughs> I know, I know. Stop. We, we can't even, look, you can't even laugh about it. <laughs> so let it's me explain to soon. the fans, like, for the past maybe, like, four or five years, my favorite fighter by far has been that motherfucker El Kakui, the boogeyman, you know? And me and Sky at the time was going back and forth, and I was like, dude, Tony should not take this fight. He should not take this fight. He should not take this fight. I told mm -hmm. Sky this repeatedly because I was terrified of it. And then, oh my God, the amount of violence that was in that fight, and then with the lack of crowd, I was the first to see like a vet trying to do that. So just the sounds, you know, of flesh and elbows and knees oh. and punches. You know, and then just Tony, just like no quit attitude, just was just a bad recipe. And, you know, ever since then, I say, you know, R.I.P. Tony, love you, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Not to uh, point out the fact that we were also there with the Chandler fight. It's been it's been a rough year to be. It's been a, it's been rough. It's just been rough. You know? Your boy, did you watch the main event? Do you recall anything that happened besides Ankaliyev getting his calves kicked off? So did I watch the main event? <laughs> yes. Did I enjoy the main event? No. Did I spaz out and think about like what I'm gonna eat for dinner? You know what I mean? Yes. Yes, I did. Right. The only thing I remember about that fight are two things. One, the leg kicks, you know. Jan was fucking his legs up, and I'm trying to, I might think, like, why aren't you blitzing this guy? He's done. Secondly, right. and Kalayev just wet blanket, you know, dry humping the fuck out of him, not doing any damage, but literally yeah. just saying, hey, man, like, let's cuddle. It's cuddle season. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Sky? Um, I was there, and I don't recall much. I just don't. I just don't recall much that happened on there. Um, I remember the leg kicks and then I just remember going some place far away inside of my brain that just made me happier because like literally I was ready to leave. I was ready to leave. I, I didn't want to be there anymore. Um, it was just, it just was not good. It was not good. Um, I'm trying to see how m many ground strikes and Goliath threw as far as his so he had 11 minutes and 20 seconds of control time and through I've never lasted 11 minutes oh <laughs> and through a whopping five punches while he was in that control time on the ground in the fourth round a whopping five he threw six and landed five i should say let's be more specific then the fifth round which two judges gave him a 10 8 um he threw 35 so he threw a couple more put I, well, much more, and then landed seventeen of those. Um, so, and he controlled him around five for four minutes and fifty seconds. Also known as assume the position, sir. I don't even. I I honestly cannot even recall that because I promise you I wasn't paying attention. I promise you I was not looking at anything that was taking place. I'm actually shocked reading that four minutes and fifty seconds. Uh, he had control. He was on top of him. That's insane. All right, so let me ask you this. What was a worse fight, um, Ankalaev and Jan or Carla and Rose? Carla and Rose, hands down. <laughs> and and right after that is uh, Yoel Romero versus Israel. Because we like oh, to forget I mean, that fight since the Carl one. And then right after that, no, somewhere in between. Number two is a close. I know. Derek Lewis and Ngannou is like a close. Like they are like. Neck and neck when it comes to is a tie. See, so for me, that was the worst simple fact, because like I went in there and I'm just so high knowing that someone's going to get put the fucking sleep. And then just literally by definition, as we all love to say, limp dick on prom night. Yes. <sighs> they just stood there and looked Correct. at each other. It was it was horrible. 
Um, so that was a crappy way to end the card. I, and then coming off of that bad decision with P- Patty Pimblett and them, it just I think that that's really what killed the buzz of the card because it was it was Correct. good up and like it was feeling good. And then like those two things was just like uh, a split draw. Like nobody wanted to see that again. So what did you think about press conference? Uncle Dana coming in saying Jamal Hill versus Glover Teixeira. First and foremost, I was blown away because it was unexpected. Everyone always knows Dana Weiss doesn't make fights the night of the fight. Then right. he said, guess what? We make fights now. Boom. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go. Yon Let's go. and Kalaev, you all had your chance. You had your, your time to shine. And all you did was stay in the shade. That's all mm-hmm. you wanted to do. I understand it's hot outside. I've been to Bali. I've been to Madagascar. It's hot. I want to stay in the shade. But guess what? Y'all fucked up your opportunity. For Jan, you know, this is probably your last shot, buddy. Yeah. Father time is coming for you. On yeah. Kalaev, he can use this as a stepping stone, hopefully, to say, like, oh, if I ever get this opportunity again, I'm going to take it. Let me ask you this. Who do you like in the fight? Oh, it's so hard because I really, really like... Of course, we all like Glover. You know, we're inspired by Glover getting, you know, being the champ. He was beating Yuri 100. the whole fight. He had a great fight with Yuri. So that's tough for me, but at the same time, like I really actually like Jamal Hill. You know, mm. uh, if you guys haven't, check out O'Day Osborne's podcast where he um, has um, Jamal Hill on there. And Jamal Hill is just spitting facts, and I, and I, and I like him. I, I like the fact that like he's grinded up there. And I, he had an interview the other day with Ariel Hawani where he was like basically saying, like, you know, there was a time to where he wasn't participating in MMA, like, and he was working at a factory job. And long story short, he was like telling his boss about, you know, what he could do and what he was capable of. And his boss was like, hey, respectfully, if you could do all that, you would be doing it. (laughs) And he was like, hey, so the next day I quit. He's like, so that's always been in his mind, like that question, like, was he good enough? And he's like on on genuine. Real quick side note. I I apologize for cutting you off. Did that not sound like the theme for Eight Mile? (laughs) It did. (laughs) You're working at this plant so long, you become a plant. He's from Detroit. He's from Detroit. He's from the D. Yeah. Oh wait, no. Okay. I think he's from um I think he's from Grand Rapids. Ah, home of Floyd Money and Mayweather. Yeah. But either way, his story it was he got all emotional in it and then like literally like a week and a half ago, his ten year old cousin died in a fire and then the day after that the grandmother died. Like there's a lot of trauma and stuff happening and so like I'm rooting for him, but at the same time, it's hard for me to go against Glover. It's better for the light heavyweights for um, for Jamal to win because Glover's not going to have that many fights. What about you? Um, at the end of the day, I don't think that um, Jamal Hill is going to be able to stop Glover from grabbing him and humping him. That's a Just strong man. Straight prison rules. That's all it's going to be. <laughs> but uh, getting back to... Uncle Dana's prep conference, Uncle Dana was on fire again. We haven't seen a, a fired up Uncle Dana in a press conference in a long time. When he said, you know, when they asked him about the main event, he goes, I don't know, I fucking spassed out in second. I fucking dead. I lost my mind. I was like, damn, motherfucker, you ain't the only one. Let me tell you. I thought that was hilarious. Like, he had no kind of, he had no care. He was keeping it 100. Yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. And, and then when they asked him about like the James Krause situation, he's like, "You think they're gonna tell me? <laughs> you think they're gonna tell me what's going on with that?" It's the fucking FBI. Somebody's somebody's going to federal prison. Federal Ooh. prison. Good luck with them boys, as they like to say. Yeah, not gonna be a good time. Um, Correct. Hope your jujitsu works. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, it's, uh, I don't think you want to do jujitsu there because being on the ground is just not. Yeah, it's not a good recipe. Yeah, not a great place to be. So that was UFC 282. Um, we have one more card left here um, within the UFC this year, and it is headlined by Jared Cannonier and Sean Strickland. Your boy Sean. <sighs> stop! 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 Oh, these were the two losers from the car with uh, <laughs> Izzy and Alex. Okay, and one, oh. you got Sean Strickland, who was an absolute just, I don't know. Do you think it's um, 
an a act? role he's playing of being no. this like psychopath. I'm going to just say it racist. You know, who literally said in the area of a water interview, he wants to kill somebody. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think it's a joke at all. I think he's very serious. Hmm. I think he's just being himself like and <coughs> I, I don't like Sean Strickland at all. That's all I'm going to say. But like, like some people say, oh, you know, he's actually a good guy. I don't care. I have nothing positive to say about Sean Strickland. And Jerry Cannonier? He just stood in there with Izzy. I, I, I did nothing. Like, I was just just overall disappointed in him, too. Like, I liked Jerry. I did like Jerry, you know, like, prior to the fight. But then, you know, I, I was just disappointed by um, his uh, performances. But, like, I mean, what does this fight really mean? Like, whoever wins this fight gets what? You know? Nothing. Exactly. It's just a fight. It's just a fight. Like, um, I'm going to lean towards... <laughs> Jared, just because I don't like Strickland. Like, yeah, this main event is what I like to equate to a belly filler. You know, sometimes you go out to eat, you spend your hard-earned money. Hey, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna spend my hard-earned money and go get some food. God damn it! You go out to eat, try something new. You know, because you usually you eat the same thing every fucking time. You know, I'm gonna try something new, and you eat it, and it just fills your belly. Yeah, there's not this like great sensation of oh my god, that was amazing. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, well, I'm full, but definitely not satisfied. Who else is right. on the card? They got your boy Bobby Green. I love Bobby against Drew Dober, which I feel like we already seen this fight. I don't know why, but I feel like we've seen this fight before, which Bobby Green's coming off of a suspension. A loss. And a and suspension, a though. Yeah. Well, I mean, everybody was going to lose to Islam. Um, you know, mm-hmm. but that's the, the champ. Don't uh, play. Everyone? Everyone? Who was it? Well, first of all, he's already been starched. Yeah, uh, that secondly, was his... Secondly, I'm not going to... I'm not going to say run it yet, but betters get ready. Because, uh... Volkanovski... I'm, 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 I'm all... I'm, uh, this, I am an Asian man away from going all in on Volkanovski. <laughs> first of all... <laughs> Not an Asian man away. And second of all, um, I I can't. I, I don't even. You know how I feel about Volkanovski. So I don't even want to talk about this. I don't. The best featherweight in the world. I would hate to have to just end this and delete you. Okay. <laughs> I, I would hate to, but I will without hesitation. Okay. Um, okay. Please don't. Now, what I will say is. If Volkanovski wins, then it makes the Max Max losing to him less painful because losing the first to that guy or the second loss or the third loss to him. I'm just, you see, I'm just, I mean, I'm just curious. Yeah. I'm a small Asian man away from shitting in a box and sending it to you in the mail. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I got last year. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Okay. <laughs> Stop playing with me. Um, I'm just curious. I didn't know if you were talking about the so first, you, second, or third. Anyways, loss. so you 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 feel like um, he can get it done against uh, Islam? Yeah, well, let's save that for later. Okay. Um, but I am I am this close away from calling it and telling all you betters to go out there to run it because, as you know, I'm undefeated. I don't lose. That's <laughs> so not true. Anyways, Strange. um, they got your boy Alice Caceres on there. Um, How this, is this picture guy still is terrible. around. How does he still have a job? Yo, this guy he almost killed your boy Chase Hooper. Um, but the haircut for me, like he looks like disheveled. <laughs> um, I well, the reason why do you want to know why he has that haircut? I do. Yeah, because um, I just read on his IMBD that he's an extra in Amistad 2 going back to Africa. Stop it. Stop it now. Well, actually, it looks like he was on a, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. He was on a five-fight win streak until he just recently lost to uh, Yusuf Sadiq. So that's what why he's still around. was his first fight in the UFC? Because he started when he was like 20 years old, 21 years old in the UFC. Yeah, he's been around a while. Let's see. 
still going He's back. Been around almost as long as Jenna Jameson. It's crazy. <laughs> 2011 so uh he's been here for 11 years going on 12 dang were you uh doubting your math right there for a second <laughs> i did for a second there i was like <laughs> <laughs> i saw that um yeah he's been around and he's still here um like a, this next fight card it's not bad like it's not bad it's like a basic fight card um Am I going to watch? But as we know, but as we know, sometimes these basic fight cards, you're not expecting much. Those are the ones. It's full of just great finishes up and down. That's why I say, like, I'm still going to watch because I'm here for the violence. Like, these are the ones where people are trying to get paid. Um, I do like this guy, uh, Manil Cape. He's, uh, this is a flyweight fight. I like that guy. I've seen him fight a couple of times. Um. Where is he from? <sighs> Portugal. No. Is that the Portuguese flag? Oh, yes. yes. It says Portugal right there. <laughs> and it's Portuguese uh, flag. Shout out to Cristiano Ronaldo. Well, let's not get you started. Um, Man crush. Brian Battle. Uh, pronounce this name, Dimitri. Bob. The <laughs> B-R-F-Z is, is uh, silent. It's pronounced Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about this real fast. Tell what you always say, which is um, the UFC has a problem. <laughs> the UFC's got a big issue because as Joe Rogan said over the weekend, these boys from Russia, Dagestan, Chechnya, they come in, right? But the UFC has a real issue because as they are beating the brakes off the rest of the talent, I can't pronounce these motherfuckers' names, right? And right. it's hard for me to get invested in you if I can't pronounce your name. It took me the longest time for me to say Habib and not Khabib, you right. know? And I'm trying to think about the first time I remember how to say his last name. We know Joe Rogan can't say it. Have you seen that clip? Yes. Of him just, no, 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 come on, come on, Joe. Hey, oh, listen, man. but the, the marketing in the UFC has a big issue. So now I think the UFC, what they have been doing, is starting putting a lot of these guys against each other to take them out. Yeah. Because they don't really know what to do with them because they're running through normal competition. Mm -hmm. They don't speak English and we can't say their names. As Uncle Cho says, tell me a story. I can't tell a story right. if I don't know your fucking name. Exactly. The only time I, yeah, the only time I don't want to know someone's name is after a one night stand. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> Some more than others. <laughs> it happens. Um, yeah, the, the, I, I don't know what they're going to do about that. They're definitely going to have to um, educate us. Uh, and then I, I do wish Darren uh, Wynn will stop fighting at 185. He's 5'6", five, probably in real life, like 5'5", five, 5'4". Five, five, He's so little. <laughs> Look at him in his picture. He looks like a dwarf. <laughs> they tried to leave? like... Look how they try to like angle it. So they... I'm wondering when did he get out of the Middle Earth? Yeah. So Duran win. I mean, I, I don't know. I see this. I see Julian Marquez uh, winning this fight. Unfortunately for him, you know, he will be missing James Krause, um, because James Krause is. We don't know what's going on over there. Yeah, literally blacklisted. Um, but yeah, so. Not much to really go over on this card, you know. Um, Armin Saruki, and I'm happy he's getting a fight. Like I said, I felt like he beat Gamrot earlier this year. So it'll be interesting to see him against another guy whose name I can't pronounce. <laughs> I mean, like, what, what, what seriously are we going to do here? I don't it know. It could be worse. Like, they could not even have a picture of you. Like, what is that? Yeah. I, I'm just going to call him Demir. Demir. Demir Bobby. See, because of Demir the is Mogulov. Demir is Mogulov. I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Bobby. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, how are you feeling? Like, with the, the end of the year wrapping? Like, how would you rank this year as far as, let's say within the this, last three years? Could make it easier. I, no, I don't need it easier. I think um, if we're talking about just fights, 
maybe not as in like anticipation. Obviously, there have been years where we just had like these big like, oh my God, this is happening, you know, kind of thing. But if you're talking about just scraps, uh, I'd be hard pressed to say this has been the best year the UFC has ever had. The fights have been amazing. And to think about what they've been able to do the last couple of years, but specifically this year with no Conor McGregor, you know, no, Ooh. no real big, stop it. No real big uh, superstar to push the numbers the way they needed to. Like even with the Nate Diaz, like, like they couldn't even really utilize Nate the way that they should have, you know, in order to get like that last little minute push that they tend to go for. So, but the fights were just amazing. I mean, the cards, like you said, like if you guys were missing out on Apex cards because you didn't know who was on it, you miss gold. Like you literally stopped digging two inches away from gold. Like some of these Facts. cards were insane. Um, Correct. And that's another reason why you need to start watching Contender Series. Yes, I will start watching Contender Series more than just when I go to and watch it live. Um, <laughs> What a flex. Soon, <laughs> hey. So, yeah, shout out to my sister, Sky, for coming through, watching, uh, to be able to watch Dana White Contender Series live. So let me ask you this. Give me two fighters who you're looking forward to see what they do in 2023. Speaking of Contender Series, Bo Nickel. Uh, I, I want to see what his debut looks like. They're rumoring that it could be March, the, the first card that's going to be here in March. Uh, he could be fighting on, so I want to see that. And the Homer in me, you know, the Homer in me is saying, Max, Max, you know. Oh, you said Homer. I thought you meant like Homer Simpson, but got it. <laughs> no, uh, you know, um, but but honestly, if I was being honest, it would be Bo and uh, Raul. Because I know that Raul Rosas Jr. wants to be active this year. And so I'm I'm really interested to see, like, is he the truth? I mean, it's very easy to see his age and, and just like be dismissive of it, but he could be the one. I mean, here's the thing. As we know with MMA, there's always a progression of fighters. You think about the old school UFC days where it's just like, all you need to do was jujitsu. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, then it was all you need to do was all you needed to do was wrestle and get into like the the Matt Hughes years of the UFC. And now right. it's like, you know, now we're starting to get those people who has watched the UFC now their entire lives, you know, and know how you have to be a mixed martial artist, you know, mm -hmm. because if not, you're going to get exposed. Shout out to Kevin Holland for being a one dimensional fighter. <laughs> um, so I, I think it's going to be interesting now when you start getting people who's been, been training in all these disciplines you know, their entire life, supposed to people who had just been like, okay, I'm a kickboxer and now I'm trying to learn takedown defense and stuff like right. that. So I want to say for me this year, the two fighters gun to my head trying to think about is one, Alex Perea. He came out this year, you can argue fighter of the year. Um, off the top of my head, I'm going to say he's fighter of the year. If you think about that, that high mountain that Izzy was on, then he just pop, pop. <laughs> Come on down here. Uh, I want to see, will they run it back with Izzy or will they give him fresh meat? You know, it's going to be really interesting to me. And my second was going to be Bo Nickel, but for the fact that you already said it, I'll go on a different route. And I'm going to say Volkanowski. Cool story, bro. Literally. I'm your bro and it's a cool story. <laughs> uh, you got to take this hate out of your heart. It's not hate. It's, uh, oh, that was something that you want me to talk about in this episode specifically was the main reason why I dislike Bokanovsky. Once again, Max Holloway has lost. I've seen Max Holloway lose before. It's not about whether or not he wins or lose, right? It's about the attitude that Volkanovsky had after the second fight because that was a close fight, as people want me to say. I felt like Max won. Majority of the people felt like Max won. That's not the point. The point was the arrogance and the nastiness that Volkanovski had afterwards is what pissed me off. The same attitude that Valentina Shevchenko had after her last fight. She was like, oh, yeah, absolutely, without a doubt. And I'm like, 
Bitch, most of no, no, that it can't be without a doubt because we're sitting here. It was a split decision at that, first of all, so it's not without a doubt. And like, no, that's not what happened. Now you can say, hey, you know, I'm happy I got the win, blah 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 blah, and so on and so forth. But Jace's whole thing was like, keep that same energy when it comes to Patty the Batty. Yes, Patty Correct. the Batty getting up there talking about uh, fight of the night and absolutely won. I mean, he's doubling down on it still today. Like he's still doubling down on the fact that he felt like he won. And I'm just like. No, like these fighters got to start like Jan. Jan was like, eh, I, I don't think, I don't know if I won. I don't think I won. Um, You know, just give it to Ankalaya. Like, You know what I mean? Like you got to be realistic. Like, like it doesn't help for you to go out and start acting like, yeah, like, you know, a hundred percent I won. It's like, no, not when the whole world is looking at you. Like if you take the humble, the quote unquote humble route, but just like the logical route of saying, hey, you know what? Uh, it was a close fight. I'm happy I got the nod, you know, blah, 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 blah. We can be like, all right, at least you understand that you were in a fight and then like it wasn't. But when you start just coming out acting like, oh, 100%, you know, that is just so whack. So, yes, I'm keeping the same energy, you know, Patty. It's look, it's looking bad for your boy, Patty. <laughs> so, so I have to ask you this question. Um, is it whack that he wasn't humble about it or is it whack that he beat Max three times? Um, it was his attitude towards it. I would have been fine mm. had he beat him. Like, like in the last fight, like he beat the shit out of Max. Like we'd never seen Max get beat the fuck up, and he beat Max the fuck up. He was just a better fighter. Period. Like he outclassed him in every way, um, shape or form. I'm okay with that. I, I, I don't. But I don't gel with his attitude. I'm just not, and that's okay. Like, like I don't like Sean Strickland. I will never like Sean Strickland. I don't like Kobe Covington. I will never like Kobe Covington. There's just certain people whose personalities like I'm not going to gel with. You like Kobe Covington all of a sudden. You know, I, I'm just, I'm not going to be a Volkanovski fan. Can I give him the respect? Absolutely. Um, and if he does run through Islam or beats Islam, then even better for Max. Like, at least you didn't lose to number 15 and you're just out here looking goofy. You know, so. Well, I think... For me, what got me on the Kobe train was the cum shot. Um, and then in regards Oz. to <laughs> and then uh, in, in regards to Volkanovski, I have a direct question for you. If Volkanovski gets his hand raised against Islam, will you say he's the goat of goats? I wouldn't call him the goat of goats because but I would say that he, I was, the resumes are different. That That's where the hesitation comes from as far as calling him a GOAT. Like, how many fights has Volkanovski had in the UFC? I think he just hit 10 fights. Um, you know, Max Holloway had to win literally 11 fights just to get a title shot. 10 fights. The 11th fight was for the uh, the interim title. Just to get a fucking title shot, you know what I mean? Um, and then there's just other people who have had to like really just fight, actually fight their way through. So, so what I'm what I'm saying is like as far as like the goat of goats, like I consider your your path to be in, you know, to getting there, uh, that matters. That do I think that he is that's why I have a problem with the with calling him a goat. I, I don't know how else to put that. Like, he beat Max. He beat um, Jose Aldo. But would well, I consider him all, the wait, GOAT wait, wait, of 145? Wait, wait, wait. We have to clarify that. He beat the shit out of Max. Continue. Um, But so do you consider him the 145 GOAT? Do I consider him the 145 GOAT? No. Jose Aldo. I consider Jose Aldo the 105, or sorry, the 145 GOAT. Even though he beat the shit out of Jose. Correct. But also that wasn't prime Jose Aldo. That wasn't the killer who came out of the WEC. But you did see Jose Aldo drop down to 135 after that and went on a killing spree. Yeah, but it still was a prime Jose Aldo. I would encourage you to go back and watch some of prime Jose Aldo, a serial killer. So if he beats Islam, would you consider him the goat of all goats? Um, Is he on your Rush, Mount Rushmore of goats? No, but I consider a little bit more to be in the Mount Rushmore of goats. Let me ask you this question. It just popped in my head. 
Has Max ever fought someone as difficult as Islam? No. I, I would say no, because I'm, st- I'm thinking specifically about the wrestling. And there's nobody, like, he hasn't fought anybody with that Dagestani type wrestling, you know. Um, I think Max's takedown defense is somewhere like 87%. So his takedown defense is good, but that's just around, among, like, regular wrestlers. Dagestani is just different. Um, that's what I'm saying. If 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 Volk can get it done against Islam, my fucking hat's the fuck off to him because wow, fucking spectacular. Like I'm not gonna act like oh no, that's just cool. I'm gonna be like what the fuck? Like he's really the guy, and I'm okay with him being the guy because once again, to me, it makes Max looks better because hey, sometimes you're just gonna lose to the guy. Like Kobe Covington's always gonna lose to Kamara Usman. He's just the guy, you know, and and that's just going to happen to the best of us. Um, but if he really is the guy, wow, you know, we slept on him for too long. I, I will I will change my tune about Volkanovski if he beats Islam. It'll be so a different me. First, we can ask, like, first, we can agree with, like, that's a big ask, right? No, because he's you don't doing think it's it. A big- no, 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 but for him to to win the fight against Islam, like you would be s- shocked. Yes. Flabbergasted, awestruck, yes. and befuddled. Yes. So that's a big ask for him to to go and actually win that fight. Mm-hmm. Let, let me ask you this before I even finish this question. How much respect do you give Volkanovski for even going after the fight? Because he definitely could have just stayed at 145, ah. living his best life. I don't I don't live in that world where like my mind says like, oh, I have to give him respect for going up. What the fuck does he lose if he goes up? Losing a fight doesn't stop him from being the 145 king, doesn't stop him from running through everybody at 145. Like to me, it's like it's not a lose. There's he loses nothing by going up there. He could just be like, ah, you know, I tried it. Like Izzy said, I dared to be great. Go back down to 145 and keep smashing everybody. Like to me, like I don't feel like, oh, you're going up and you're fighting like, ah, ah. What about you? Um, so I give him mad props. I give him more respect, not only because he's going up and fighting, and I think like where it's different, right? So going into that fight, Izzy was favored to beat Jan. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. people forget that. Volkanovski is not going to favor to win this fight. He's mm-hmm. I don't know the odds in front of me. I would imagine he's at least a three, if not a four and one dog. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's one thing for going up in weight. It's another thing going up in a weight and doing a fight that you're expected to lose. And yeah, you can kind of say with that, oh, well, I'm playing with house money at that point. But again, for me, that's really truly daring to be great. Mm-hmm. Are you looking at the odds for the fight? Yeah, I was hoping it was on the main page, but let's. So yeah, I just think that we really got to like tip our hats to Volkanovski in this scenario because. You know, it would be an easier path for him, assuming he can make it, to go to 135 than to face a Dakistani killer. And um, if you don't reward people like that, then, like, why people, what is the incentive for people to What is to the reward? Things? Well, but what is the... Greatness. No. No, I, yeah, but if you don't win, then, oh, <laughs> you, you tried something. Like, like, if you win, that is where the respect comes in. That is where, like I said, I'll change my tune and I'll be like, holy shit. Like how we felt about Kamara. We didn't know who the fuck Kamara was, didn't care about Kamara. It was kind of just like, oh, okay. Then all of a sudden, Kamara started putting it all together and we were like, oh, he's that guy. Like my, the way I felt about Kamara changed completely. Um, so Islam, is- one second. Islam is a minus 400 favorite and Volkanovski's a <laughs> plus 300 dog. <laughs> So before we analyze that, I'm I'm going to push back a little bit because I'm going to say I give you respect for trying something different. And then if you win, then that's where the praise comes in, supposed to respect. Mm. I, I don't know. For me, like I didn't respect Max Holloway more when he went up to fight Dustin. It was just like, yeah, OK. Like I, I just for me, like even with Izzy, like I wasn't like, oh, my if anything, like yeah, so I think we just differ there. Um, but, I mean, I'm excited to see it. Um, we'll see. You know, on that same card, Yair Rodriguez versus Josh Emmett. I, Plus 300, huh? 
plus 300 dog. You hear the dogs barking? That, <laughs> that line is going to move by the time that fight goes off. I'm assuming it'll be plus 350 plus oh, yeah. 375. You think so? You don't think more money's going to come in on Volk? Hell no. I think money will come in on Volk. When they start running those ads about Dakistani and the Dakistani wrestling being uh, Habib's protege, you know, you remember what he just did, you know, to certain fighters and just ragdolling them. And then here, the smaller man, you know, which really he's not because, you know, he used to weigh 220 pounds. I don't think that Islam has never weighed that in his entire fucking life. Yeah, but that's that's he he is the smaller man. Islam's five ten. Volkanovski is not five six. I've met him. He's shorter than me. I'm five six. He's at least five 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 four and a half. Like he's a very short man. Um, but I, I think people are gonna realize like right now it's all fantasy. It's all games. Kind of like what we continue to do with. Gaethje against Habib and we, we did it every single time Habib fought we were like oh what about this same thing with Charles it was like oh what about this or this person's gonna get him with that but the reality is is that Islam Mahashev is going to run through Alexander Volkanovsky clip it off we're gonna save it for when the fight happens and it's just a fact we can romanticize it and say oh but Volk's gonna do this and he and just be fucking logical, people. Did you see what he did to Charles Oliveira? And I did was hoping see, and praying for Charles. Did you see what Volk did to Max Holloway? And what's your point? Max Holloway and Islam are completely different fighters. As is Charles Oliveira, Charles Oliveira and Volkanovski, two completely different fighters. Correct. Correct. Thank you. But either way, the results will be the same. Islam Mahashev is going to win that fight easily. Well, I thought <laughs> you said easily, easily you were professing your love for Callan Holland. How did that work out for you? I didn't say that he was going to win easily. I said I wanted him to win, but I was going. Mm. I, I felt like Wonder Boy. It, it's all live. It's live. I, I, I felt like Wonder Boy would get it done, but I wanted Kevin Holland to win. Then he went out there and decided to be a Neanderthal. On a real side note, and I hate to remind you and the audience of this, but I have to in this situation. Mm. I'm undefeated in my picks. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. All I'm saying is that I'm about done with you after all of this Max Holloway uh, hate that you've spewed this whole time. I, I feel actual disdain in my heart for you right now because disdain. you've been trying me you've been trying me this whole time this whole time you wanted me to come up out you wanted me to act up yeah you and you know what i, I won't forget i won't forget you know blame the black man that's really original i've never heard of that before yeah life. yeah 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 angry black woman you know just all kind of stereotypes either but way you realize you have to see me tonight <laughs> anyways <laughs> uh yeah, so we will be back um, the beginning of next year going over, you know, just different things. One thing I definitely want to get into, we want to get into the GOAT talk. We like like the, the, the style of the show is definitely going to change. We're going to be just talking more with you guys and just getting into like the fun shit in MMA, like rather than going down every talking single card. that shit. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, like, we I need to get into the GOAT talk. I might not be a oh, Sorry. Sorry. We're going to be talking about the GOAT talk. We're going to start getting into weight class because I have been going back and forth on TikTok. By the way, if you guys aren't, follow us on TikTok. Um, I've been going back and forth on TikTok about weight classes and what's the best weight class. And it's just getting heated. And we need to talk about these things like thoroughly. So, yeah, we'll be back beginning of next year. And as y'all know, I might not be a black belt in jujitsu. I'm a black belt in running this motherfucking mouth let's go fourth degree <laughs> let's go scrap and roll we are out peace